let's talk a little bit about 2022. What do you feel like God is showing you? He said that God is speaking to him from Joshua when he went to the valley in one of the first key battles with the Amorites, taking and recovering ground that needed to be taken. He extended time for victory. And what I, I, I heard it, and when I got back to the United States, the Lord said, that's the word. We're taking our government back. We're gonna run for school board. We're gonna run for PTA. We're gonna run for city council. We're gonna run for county board of supervisors. The public school system has become public enemy number one. We need to take back the education of our children because whoever controls the textbooks controls the future. Stolen elections have consequences and a spirit of lawlessness has been loosed in America. Is there no check on this lawlessness? You can see a pattern of travel that shows people and the only path that they are taking that day, right? It's not like they're just driving around the city and they happen to pass these things. If you have one person who's stopping at 30 drop boxes, that's really, really, really suspicious. We cannot have a free society if most of the speech in this country is controlled by a handful of left-wing oligarchs in Silicon Valley. It was not correct to ban Donald Trump. I think that was, that was a mistake. I'm delighted that Elon is taking on this just head on, boldly. Elon Musk, in his own, in his own words, is out for blood. He replies, I am indeed out for blood. When you have a mafia and a Luciferian mafia at the top, forcing issues through economic measures all the way down, Big media and big pharma and the government are in alliance. All the levers of power for culture are conjoined. Big tech, big media, big government, all on an authoritarian leftist agenda. A lot of major institutions in our country have become infected with this woke virus. I don't know why the left is so obsessed with talking to kids about sex. It's perverted, it's demonic, and most of America is rejecting it. I ran Elizabeth Warren's campaign. I am, I am a representative of wokeness. All of this is very good. So the fight against woke capital has begun and that is definitely a positive. What's happening now is he's exposing the actual condition of America. It's almost like the enemy has to turn over all his cards. He's answering those prayers, but he's answering them in a more profound way than we want them answered. We want them answered immediately. God allows them to serve a purpose. It looks like our appeals to heaven are being answered. There has been an early draft of the decision from the Supreme Court to overturn Roe v. Wade. 2022, this is a divine turnaround year. When this is overturned, which is at hand now, we are going to see the uh, really a third great awakening, signs, wonders, and miracles, repentance, sweeping across this nation. God's raising up an awakening voice in America, and the awakening is civic as well as spiritual. It's amazing this phenomenon that's taking place in America. There's genuinely an awakening going on. You're going to see things shift dramatically on these issues, C critical race theory in schools, what's happening with the indoctrination. Parents are fed up. They're getting involved. Things are changing. I see California awakening. The wind of change is blowing. The curriculum shall be changed by my hand, says the Lord, for I am releasing my anointing that shall break the yoke of woke. The answer for America is a revival. The answer for Gen Z is a revival. They gotta have an encounter with the Lord. 2022 is the battles we're going to win in order to recover ground that was taken. And in doing so, the church is gonna to come to a new, dare I say, militant level of maturity. We need people all over the country to be willing to put on that full armor of God. We will fight. And the way that we will fight is through the inbreaking of the kingdom of God to the earth. And we will consume everything with the power of God. And we will take back this world. Nobody, not even the devil himself, can stop what God has planned for this season, for this hour, for such a time as this. This is Isaiah 60. It's time for the glorious church of the Lord Jesus Christ to arise and shine like never before. And we are going to take this nation back. We are the army of God 
and we are going to take this nation back. Hey guys, it's John from E511. Uh, so I want to cover some of the things that have been developing over uh, the past several years, and especially this year, uh, that I believe are indications of a coming pendulum swing in the Great Awakening direction that will really amplify the false light deception to a greater degree than ever before. And most of what I'm going to be talking about will really only make sense in the context of what I've already covered in past videos, uh, particularly my uh, Jehu series. So if you haven't watched that yet, I would recommend doing that first because a lot of the points that I'm going to be making here uh, won't make as much sense without understanding the larger context that I lay out in detail in that series. And really, this is a continuation of what I've been covering and warning about since 2016. So to really understand the entire context, you'd have to uh, go through all my videos starting with the What's Really Coming series. But a lot of that is brought up to date and revised uh, through the Jehu series. So just FYI, if you're watching this video, I'm working off the assumption that you already understand the larger context of what I'm talking about uh, with all this Great Awakening, New Age versus New World Order, uh, Jehu versus Jezebel and Baal stuff. And so the purpose of this video series is going to be to give you guys an overview of the changing landscape that's really started to come to fruition this year. And I'm going to be throwing a lot of different points and clips at you guys, but if you understand the larger context, it's going to be pretty easy to see what's going on, uh, what's developing, and what's on the horizon. So first, I want to briefly talk about some of the pendulum swings that we've had in the past few years. Uh, first, we had Obama's presidency, which uh, swung very far to the left, more so than any other time in America's history up to that point followed by Trump, who uh, swung things in the complete opposite direction, very far to the right. Uh, again, probably more so than any other time in America's history. And that pendulum swing to the far right really started to show itself near the end of Obama's presidency with uh, WikiLeaks and Pizzagate, uh, which was the first major mention of large-scale pedophilia and human trafficking rings and corruption and all that stuff. That's when the truth or narrative started to break out into the mainstream. You know, and we had Alex Jones go on Joe Rogan for the first time and talk about this stuff and talk about the emails uh, that were leaked and all this, uh, these allusions to pedophilia. In fact, that actually turned out to be the exact same month, October 2016, is when that first started to come out. That was the same month that I released uh, the first video in my What's Really Coming series. I didn't know about WikiLeaks and Pizzagate until much, much later. Um, I didn't even mention it in the series. In fact, I don't think I learned about that stuff until uh, early 2018. And the first time I mentioned it was in my Kanye West video. And I didn't even specifically talk about it. I just showed this screenshot of a story from this truther website called A Sheep No More with the headline, Pizzagate, Mass Meditation Event for Arrest of Elite Washington Pedophile Ring. And then you see there at the bottom it says, Millions join forces as worldwide mass awakening of political pedophilia takes hold. I remember seeing this story and thinking, oh man, this, this awakening stuff is really happening. You know, I was saying how all this stuff would eventually be exposed and that that would be the catalyst to the New Age Awakening. And this article was one of the first big signs of confirmation of what I had predicted would happen. This was the first time that I, I saw this uh, New Age war against the New World Order really start to come out into the public square. And so the Pizzagate and WikiLeaks stuff was really the first wave of what we're seeing now with the Great Awakening. The mainstreaming of conspiracy theory and the exposure of the New World Order and the Great Reset and the growing rebellion and fight for freedom against all that. The so-called prophecies coming from the mouths of people like Lance Wallnau, Hank Kuhneman, uh, Johnny Enlow, and so forth, they are a direct outgrowth of what started happening in late 2016 with WikiLeaks and Pizzagate, and the corruption of Obama and Hillary Clinton coming to the forefront. This is all a continuation of that path that started right before Trump got into office. 
Because very soon after that initial exposure with WikiLeaks and Pizzagate, a year later, in October 2017, uh, during Trump's presidency, the QAnon movement started. And then it wasn't too long after that that we started officially hearing about this great awakening at the mainstream level. With all of these Christian leaders and patriots talking about waking up to the dark agenda, going to war against the New World Order and the satanic globalists and all that. This trend has gradually been building over the past six to seven years at the very least, if not much longer, but definitely since right before Trump was elected. But then with the Great Awakening stuff coming to the mainstream near the end of Trump's presidency, another big pendulum swing was building, which is kind of where we've been the past couple years with the pandemic and the lockdowns, uh, the official announcement of the Great Reset, uh, Biden getting into office, big tech censorship, and the LGBT abortion and woke stuff getting really, really extreme. So to put it in the context of Jehu and Jezebel, the pendulum has been in Jezebel's direction these past couple years. So it's been this extreme back and forth, and it's getting more and more extreme with each pendulum swing. You know, each side keeps coming back with a stronger response. Obama and Hillary leads to Trump and the Great Awakening, which then swings back in the other direction and leads to the Great Reset and Biden and really horrible and blatant evil through LGBT and abortion and very blatant uh, globalism through the Great Reset and the stuff that's going on at the World Economic Forum. And now we're starting to see signs of another major pendulum swing, probably bigger than ever before. With everything that's happened in the past couple of years, uh, the lockdowns and the jabs, uh, this so-called church persecution, uh, big tech censorship, cancel culture, high gas prices, the woke and abortion stuff, there's a large-scale counter-movement that's been rising up, an anti-woke reaction, an alliance that's been forming that crosses religious and political barriers. As I'll be showing you guys, even longtime liberal voters are anti-woke. So the Great Awakening is building and building. Again, it's a, it's a culture war. And the two sides in this culture war are becoming more and more prominent. You know, we're at the point now where people are choosing either Jehu or Jezebel. And Jezebel has gotten really, really bad these past couple years. And a whole bunch of Jehus are starting to rise up to throw Jezebel down. So if you thought the false light delusion was strong during Trump's presidency, I think it's about to get ramped up to the nth degree. Because there are a lot of Trump-like politicians getting elected and gaining traction with the American people all in direct response to the rise of the blatantly dark and evil stuff that's been coming to the forefront recently, right? The Baalism has gotten really, really bad and blatant, and the opposing force of Jehu is starting to rise up. And I actually alluded to this briefly in a Facebook post back in January of last year. Uh, so this would have been right at the beginning of Biden's presidency. And I was getting a lot of questions from people like, you know, what's going to happen now that Trump lost? Is the whole false light theory out the window? How does this change your end times views and stuff? And people who I used to be in fellowship with who had supported my ministry and channel, uh, some of them were very disillusioned by Biden's victory and with some of the stuff that was happening with James Coates and other pastors in Canada, uh, which to them was proof that this really was the beast system rising up to persecute the saints. And they thought that the false light stuff was going to die out and the dark, tyrannical agenda really was Satan's ultimate endgame. They were really getting caught up in the fear and the emotion, which, as I've said in the past, is one of the main snares that leads into this deception. And unfortunately, they couldn't see the forest for the trees and started attacking me and slandering me and uh, saying that I was going off the rails and deceiving people. Some of them were even on Jeff Durbin's page trying to spread the word about how dangerous I was. You know, that I was leading people into worshiping the beast system because they thought that my views were completely baseless because it seemed to them like the dark, tyrannical uh, world order was about to take over and persecute the saints. They were too gripped by their current fears and by what was happening in the moment to see the big picture. And I'll admit, I was a bit thrown by Biden getting into office. I really thought Trump would win by a landslide. 
but in no way did it make me question my views because I knew that the Great Awakening deception was bigger than Trump, that it was bigger than QAnon, and it needed more time to build to the point where the tribulation finally gets started with the white horse going out, which, as I've said, I, I believe the white horse represents the Christian New Age Dominionist movement finally uh, setting out to conquer the world. And this isn't something that just happens in one presidential term or in one country. There needs to be a back and forth for a while, which is what's been happening uh, the past several years. And a little more time in the dark these past couple years has been the perfect uh, sort of incubator for the Great Awakening to grow to its next phase. You know, I've referenced the caterpillar butterfly analogy before, uh, how, you know, the beautiful butterfly emerges out of the dark cocoon. And New Agers always appeal to that analogy to illustrate their worldview, their idea of spiritual awakening, how transformation comes through periods of darkness, and how these periods of darkness are necessary uh, to help propel humanity towards spiritual awakening. And that is based in some truth, right? You know, when we go through hard trials in life, that usually helps us to grow and mature. And God uses things like that to help us to spiritually grow. You know, if, if we respond in the correct way, that is. But the enemy is taking that truth and using it for nefarious ends and saying that humanity as a whole will spiritually awaken or enter the golden age as all this stuff comes to the surface and we uh, awaken to it and realize it, and we rise up and overcome it. You know, we overcome the New World Order Great Reset agenda. And after we do that, on the other side is, you know, the Golden Age Utopia. And even though I was a bit surprised by Biden's victory, uh, once everything started to settle down and it became clear that, you know, Biden really was going to be president, I started to see how people were reacting. And I realized that a nice, long, horrible Biden administration, and likely one that got in by illegal means, as we'll be talking about, is just what the Great Awakening needed to be propelled to the next level. And I made this post back in January 2021 saying, I think Biden's time in office will only make the Great Awakening that much stronger. The Great Awakening is much bigger than QAnon. It's only just getting started. So even if QAnon completely died out, it would only be dead in name because the same false light, new age, nationalistic defiance to tyranny, let's take out the satanic kingdom mindset that was behind QAnon is growing and growing, as I've been covering in past videos. But as it turns out, the QAnon movement is not dead. In fact, on June 24th, the same day that Roe v. Wade was overturned, which we'll be talking about too, Q suddenly made a return on the image board 8 con you know, after like two years of saying nothing. And uh, here's some shots of the first drop. He said, shall we play a game once again? But this is not going to be a Q-focused series of videos because I don't need the Q piece of the puzzle to talk about everything that I'm going to be talking about. In fact, I already had all my research and notes and clips all gathered together long before this recent news about the return of Q. QAnon is just one manifestation of the Great Awakening. If we only see the Great Awakening through uh, QAnon, then we're going to miss the real deception that's going on. And QAnon is not a PSYOP. Okay? There is a genuine global movement against government all over the world, not just America. This movement against the Great Reset, against uh, the vaccines, against leftism, against tyranny. And that's one of the main points I'm going to be covering throughout this series of videos is how this Great Awakening is growing and how there really is a very real bottom-up rebellion that's gradually brewing. And near the end, I'm going to show you guys uh, some commentary from leading conservative political leaders who are... Uh, talking about the rise of what's being called the New Right. So QAnon is just one way that the Great Awakening has been manifesting. It's one version of it that satisfies a particular group of people that are a bit more extreme in their views. But if QAnon is too cultish for you, you know, where the patriotism and the worship of Trump is a little too much, 
Well, there are plenty of other more moderate ways that you can get swept up in the Great Awakening deception. Jeff Durbin, for example, he has uh, publicly denounced QAnon and called it a cult, but he's still one of the main leaders of the false light movement. You know, he teaches post-millennialism, uh, dominionism, defiance to tyranny, taking the land for the kingdom of God. You know, he's yoked with people like Joel Webin, who is pro-Christian nationalism. He's very blatant about this. He says that post-millennialism uh, leads you to become a Christian nationalist. It's all the same stuff. The bottom line philosophy is the same between Jeff Durbin and QAnon. And despite its apparent extremity in some areas, at root, QAnon is fighting for the same thing that Jeff Durbin and Michael Brown and Lance Wallnau are. The domination of Christian culture, the war against the satanic globalist, Babylon, which is ultimately pointing to the harlot, as I've been saying. They're all on the same trajectory in this war against Babylon, against satanic secularist culture, the death cult, as they call it. And remember, it's the beast that ultimately destroys Babylon the harlot. That's why they're all so adamant about taking down Babylon or invading Babylon, as the Seven Mountain Mandate promoters say. What they're really saying is that we will be aligned with the beast when he comes on the scene to destroy Babylon. But there are still enough differences within this anti-woke alliance for people to still believe that they're not all aligned. But those differences are only superficial and surface level. And the differences will get less and less as time goes on. You know, as the darkness gets worse and worse, the light side will unite more and more. There will be more unity around a shared group of values or morals, all in the name of advancing the kingdom of God or bringing heaven to earth. People say QAnon is a dead cult. Well, then why are Christian and conservative leaders all over the country talking about a great awakening? Hasn't that been the QAnon movement's main message, the great awakening? taking the kingdom of God by force, awakening to the tyranny that we're under, and fighting for our freedoms. That message is everywhere now. So Jeff Durbin can call QAnon a cult all he wants, but he's right in step with them. He's heading in the same direction. Even Ali Beth Stuckey is talking about the Great Awakening. Here she is referring to it in a tweet. And she's Calvinist. You know, she's not an NAR person. So you can't tell me that QAnon is a dead cult. The bottom line message is not only living on, but growing. Again, that's because the Great Awakening is much bigger than QAnon. And that's why I was able to talk about a coming Great Awakening deception over a year before QAnon started. Go back and listen to what's really coming. I started writing the script for that series in, I think, August of 2016. Put out the first one in October. And as I've learned since then, there were uh, some false prophets and teachers talking about a coming Great Awakening years and years ago. And QAnon was just the first wave of the Great Awakening that helped to propel it into the mainstream political scene. And now it's the basic narrative of the entire false light movement in its culture war against the satanic left, which has really become the mainstream message of pretty much the entire conservative red wave side. Even Fox News talks about the satanic left, and many other conservative commentators are doing the same. This war against the satanic left is Gnostic. Okay, it's not a war against Gnosticism. It is Gnosticism itself. And as we'll get into, these more recent evils and corruptions like election fraud and abortion and LGBT, uh, these evil so-called Jezebelic things, are being used to give platforms to New Age and Dominionist ideologies that are building a global, false, golden calf religion that looks godly and righteous, but is spiritually bankrupt. The worse the dark side gets, the better the false light looks by comparison. And that's what's starting to happen now on a very large scale. We're seeing a new momentum from the Great Awakening which Biden's administration has helped to empower and propel forward. A Trump victory in 2020 would have calmed things down. The awakening would have gotten too comfortable, and it probably would have gotten a bit complacent. 
But Biden's victory almost immediately started another tidal wave of false light delusion. In fact, here's something interesting that Glenn Beck said in a recent interview he did with conservative radio host Jesse Kelly on May 14th. Now, we're going to come back to this interview later on because there's uh, several interesting things that they talk about. But what he says near the end of the interview echoes my thoughts exactly about the effects of Biden's administration and how it's actually helped the Great Awakening build momentum. In some way, I think that uh, Trump, and hear me out, I think Trump losing that election might have been a blessing in disguise because I really felt that so many people on our side were like, yeah, it's all fine now. Trump's got it. It's good. And no, it, no, it's not. We, we have a lot of problems. And Biden coming in, you saw what was happening in the schools. You see what's happening, what they're really planning for energy, et cetera, et cetera. And I think a lot of people are going, whoa, 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 whoa. This is not what I signed up for. Right. So he says Trump losing the election was a blessing in disguise because Biden's presidency made people realize just how bad things are. And a Trump victory would have made people complacent and apathetic. The first wave of the Great Awakening wasn't enough. We need more people to wake up. And that's what Biden and the woke movement and the Great Reset and the stuff that's been happening in the schools, that's what that's been doing. You know, uh, Glenn Beck mentioned how, you know, we're seeing what's happening with the schools. And that's been one of the biggest catalysts for this new momentum is the stuff that's been pushed in the schools and on children, as we'll be uh, talking about, too. And interestingly, this same sentiment was echoed by Lance Walnow and Hank Kuhneman at a Flashpoint Live event that was held in Tulsa back in April. I believe we need to put our faith out for this to be the beginning of a movement. I could see rallies all over America. All over America. Because we've been talking all along about this movement and this moment. We said there would be a populist backlash. We said it back when nobody wanted to talk about it. Because everybody wanted to see President Trump get into office. The country needed to see where its condition was. Now, Christians know the condition of America because we're like, you know, we get it. Right. But America needed to know the condition of America. Right. They need to see the natural outcome of the policies, the worldview, frankly, the religion of the radical left. You know, the Bible says in Proverbs 631, if the thief be found. How many of you know the thief is being found? <laughs> how many of you know they're being exposed by the hand of God? And I believe that God has allowed this to happen to reveal the state, not of the union only, but also the state of his church. And so we're in a place right now that the thief is being found, but there is a payback coming. And God has been prophesying for a long time. What is going to bring the payback is called what you are here for this evening and those of you that are watching it would come by a pushback a stand of those that would say you know what we are not going to allow this to happen and that's what a populist uprising is it's it's when the people when we could speak to america and i don't know how many people are here right now that actually are not bona fide you know born again you know fire breathing pentecostal christians we're hoping we have a lot of people here that are drawn out because they do have a, a, a love for the nation and a sense of concern and that the gospel I'm praying is going to touch thousands of people in these meetings because those are the raw recruits that are coming in for the harvest in America. So they both essentially said what Glenn Beck said, that you know we all wanted to see Trump get into office, but we needed to see just how bad our country really was. You know, it's like that old saying, uh, things have to get worse before they get better. Or you have to hit rock bottom before you really finally turn things around. And that's kind of the same principle here. Biden's administration has brought the country to rock bottom, or at least, you know, close to it in some ways. And now a growing number of people are finally saying, okay, that's it. I have to get involved. We have to do something to save America. Now, I'm not saying that things are actually going to get better in any kind of long-term way, 
even from the false light perspective. But I think there might be some kind of turnaround, economically, morally, whatever, that lasts for a little while or has some kind of large-scale effect. In other words, America might get great again to some degree that will further delude people into believing the messages of the false prophets and buying into this whole Great Awakening movement and post-millennialist eschatology. And as Hank Kuhneman said, there's a payback coming, a pushback, through these rallies and gatherings like this all over the country. And it's been this increase of darkness and tyranny and its exposure that's been driving the rise of these rallies and gatherings. You know, you heard Lance Wall now call it the beginning of a movement, a populist uprising. And he's right. That's exactly what's been growing, particularly in the past year. And again, that's what I said would be coming six years ago in my What's Really Coming series, where I outlined that what's really coming is global rebellion and how there would be this freedom movement all over the world as the New World Order got worse and worse and people's freedoms started to be threatened and more and more people started buying into the truther and New Age narrative. Okay, not a top-down agenda of light-side Luciferians, as some people mistakenly teach about the false light, but a bottom-up, grassroots movement all over the country and the world as people genuinely and desperately try to hold on to their freedoms and their love for this world. And although this freedom movement, uh, this populist uprising, has been building for a while, it's really grown especially over the past year, year and a half, since Biden's been in office. Biden's administration has been the latest you know, so-called wake-up call for people to join the Great Awakening and to fight for America and for their freedoms, to fight for what they believe is a righteous and godly cause. People truly think that by fighting for America that they're fighting for the kingdom of God. People are being recruited to the false light through the exposure of the dark side and the moral and economic decline of the nation, which is what I said would be coming, that there would be widespread rebellion against the New World Order and that this rebellion, as opposed to the New World Order itself, this rebellion against the dark side would be the true foundation for the eventual B system. And that's what Walnow and Kuhneman both refer to, a populist backlash, rallies all over America, the beginning of a movement. Now remember guys, the beast has a right-hand man called the false prophet who calls down fire from heaven and performs false signs and wonders. Who does that look like? Does that look like uh, communist China? Or does it look more like Lance Wanow and Hank Kuhneman and Jeff Durbin? You know, I think the Great Awakening looks a lot more like the B system than the Great Reset does. And in order to have a populist uprising or rebellion, there has to be this dark, looming threat of tyranny, which is what the Biden administration has given us. And this looming threat of tyranny and darkness and craziness everywhere is pushing lukewarm Christians to rallies and gatherings like this. People who are not spiritually discerning, who may not have necessarily you know, completely bought into blatant false teachings hook, line, and sinker, but you know, who also aren't very deep or mature in their faith and their walk with God, they're going to fall for the messages of these prophets because of how good they look in the midst of all the insanity and because a lot of the things that they're saying seem true in the midst of the chaos, which is kind of a picture of the beast. He's going to look like God himself in the midst of all the craziness and chaos around him. People right now are thinking, you know, wow, this really is Satan's beast kingdom rising up. We got to wake up and do something as a church and as a nation and follow the lead of these prophets who have been right about so many things. People's idolatry of America is being ignited like never before. Remember 2 Timothy 4.3, people will not endure sound teaching and will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own passions, which again points to a populist movement, not some top-down agenda. These teachers and prophets are being propped up by the people and their idolatry, not by the government 
or the Jesuits or the Freemasons or whatever. And these are the kind of people, as Lance Wallnau said, the fire-breathing Pentecostals. These are the kind of people that are going to be getting more and more involved all over the country in local elections and school boards. People like Brandon Burden, who I covered in my last Jehu video, who go to local uh, meetings and shout and take it over by talking nonstop with their self-righteous attitude. People like Greg Locke and Hank Kuhneman and Kirk Cameron and Jeff Durbin. I know he's not a Pentecostal, but again, he's on the same trajectory. And it's the same self-righteous attitude. It's the same kingdom now mindset. Calvinists like to say theonomy and pretend that it's not dominionism, but it is. You know, people who have bought into dominionist kingdom now theology and who are self-righteously angry over rampant immorality and economic decline and are ready to bring in the kingdom of God themselves and who are you know, getting sick and tired of the tyranny and are ready to start getting more physical. And Kuhneman said something interesting. He said, they're being exposed by the hand of God, which again continues this theme of the exposure of the dark side or Jezebel. And he's right to some degree. They are being exposed by the hand of God. And that's something we need to keep in mind and something that I think I myself have been a bit mistaken on in the past. I used to hold to this view that Satan was exposing all this stuff, that he was the one really behind it. But I, I don't think that that's a correct or truly biblical way to look at it. Again, going back to Jehu and Jezebel, Satan did not throw down Jezebel. Satan did not bring judgment against Jezebel. God did. Satan did not raise up Jehu, right? God did. And so I think it's important to keep God's sovereignty in mind and to be careful about saying that all this stuff is being done by Satan or secret societies or that it's all being exposed purposely by Satan or whomever. And remember in Revelation, both the beast and the harlot are judged and destroyed, but the harlot gets it first. And she gets it by the hand of the beast, just like Jezebel gets it by the hand of Jehu. So I think it's kind of the same thing here, where God judges and destroys the worst of the two first, just like he destroyed Jezebel while judgment against Jehu and Israel was prolonged. So remember, God is exposing and bringing judgment, not the devil. But the devil is working his deception within the movement that is bringing judgment to make it look as righteous and godly as possible. We are here to say we're going to change America. There Come on, let me hear you. We're going to change America. We are now no longer a remnant, an underground movement, but we are the army of God, and we are going to take this nation back in the name of Jesus. Somebody shout right now. Somebody shout. All right, so I want to back up a little bit now to early last year when this uh, new momentum first started to build. Uh, the whole Reawaken America tour, which most of you probably know about, where all these New Agers and NAR Dominionist preachers like Mickey Willis and Carrie Madej and Greg Locke and Arthur Pulowski and Sean Foyt and so many others, they've all been gathering together at these big events across the country this past year or so. And it's been another major vehicle for this Great Awakening movement to continue building steam. Uh, well, the whole Reawaken America tour started near the beginning of Biden's presidency in April 2021. And General Mike Flynn said himself that he and Clay Clark started what became known as the Reawaken America tour to expose election fraud and to combat the pandemic stuff, uh, which they've been calling medical tyranny. And last August, he did an interview with Stephen Strang, who's the founder and CEO of Charisma Media, uh, which some of you are probably familiar with. It's one of the uh, leading outlets and publishers of New Apostolic Reformation material. They promote and publish the work of all kinds of false teachers like Jonathan Kahn, Michael Todd, uh, James Gold, Michael Brown. The list just goes on and on. 
In fact, Jennifer LeClaire, who we've uh, looked at a bit in my Jehu series, uh, she used to be an editor for Charisma Magazine. And they have a whole bunch of outlets. There's Charisma Magazine, Charisma News, Charisma Publishing House. Uh, they have a podcast and a whole bunch of stuff. And as expected, they push the whole prophetic spiritual warfare thing uh, that's a major component of the false light side in this culture war uh, that's being painted as a spiritual war. Okay, the prophetic spiritual warfare thing is just a spiritual mask that they put on top of the culture war to make it seem like a spiritual war, uh, to make it seem like it's God versus Satan, which is a red flag in and of itself because there's no such thing as God versus Satan. Um, it's not. There's not two equal sides in this thing. So it, it's not a spiritual war, it's a culture war over who controls this world, white magicians versus black magicians. And Charisma Media was even promoting the idea that the statue uh, near the UN building in New York, uh, the statue of a jaguar with wings that they put up last November, uh, which everyone was freaking out over, uh, which I made a post about saying how it's another one of these overly obvious so-called end times fulfillments or breadcrumbs that don't require spiritual discernment and lead people astray into false eschatology. And more specifically, they lead people to push the prophetic clock ahead of schedule, uh, which is another common trait within the Great Awakening. While Charisma Media ended up promoting the very trap that I was trying to warn about. Uh, just like a lot of the truther channels, they were saying that it had something to do with the beasts of Daniel and Revelation. And they were saying that because it has rainbow colors, it's promoting LGBT. So... Again, it's the same kind of false light stuff. Exposing a counterfeit B system, exposing Jezebel and the left, and painting that side as the beast. Okay, that's what the false light does. It paints the so-called dark side as the B system, when in reality it's part of the harlot system that the beast ends up destroying in Revelation 17. Okay, so this is all setting the stage for that eventual battle between the beast and the harlot. Which, to simplify it, is really just God using the most massive Gentile empire ever assembled to judge Israel for its wickedness. Okay, it's just simply a repeat of the Old Testament judgment day of the Lord cycle, but on a global scale. And very interestingly, but not surprisingly, Charisma Media also has a bunch of articles about how to go to war against the Jezebel spirit, and how the Jezebel spirit is trying to destroy America. So... Again, it's the same false light Jehu versus Jezebel narrative that I've been uh, covering in my Jehu series. Uh, here's one article titled, Warning, Jezebel Spirit is Waging War Against America, Church. And then here's another one from May 2021 called, Prophetic Dream, God is Removing the Jezebels in Power from His House. Right, and so the implication there is that the Capitol or Washington, D.C. is God's house in America, which is a very Christian nationalist view. And in this article, the so-called prophetess says that she had a dream where the spirit of Jezebel was thrown down, making way for a newfound freedom to sweep through the house of God, as the Jehus around the country rise up and usher the church into positions of political power around the country. And at one point she says, the Jehus have arrived. And that's what I see forming right now as the pendulum starts swinging in the other direction. Jezebel has gotten really bad. And I see a lot of Jehus rising up to try and establish justice and enthrone the church as the ruling body in the nation and the world. And a lot of them are saying, especially in regard to abortion, that justice will sweep across the land. Righteousness will be established. For them, this is the fulfillment of their dominionist utopia that they think is the millennial kingdom of Christ, but is actually a prelude to the beast system. So this is the kind of stuff that Stephen Strang's Charisma Media puts out. Not only do they promote blatant false teachers, but they also promote the Jehu movement and the idea that Jehu represents the dominion of the church and the Great Awakening and that we need to make war against the Jezebel spirit and the Jezebel system and cast it down and rise up as a church and take control of the world, which you heard uh, Mario Murillo say just a little while ago. He said, you know, we are the army of God and we're going to take this nation back, which is something that we're hearing a lot of right now. And so anyway, here's some of what General Flynn said in his interview with Strang uh, last August about how and why this Reawaken America tour got started. 
And so that was the that was the initial discussion. And then we got talking about all the other things that are going on in the country from the uh, the, the the fraud or the lack of you know, the incredible misrepresentation of what's going on with the three November election, everything that it had to do with the covid craziness that we are experiencing that everybody is fully aware of the various decisions that are coming out of the current administration the you know administration run by joe biden and so as we got talking about it we said well why don't we why don't we raise the notch up and and uh, and i'll be part of it as as a uh, you know as not only somebody in the national security you know arena but also uh someone who the, Amer- the american public have gotten to know about and so I can I can you know say thank you, and also talk about what I believe the country where where the country is heading and what the, I believe the country needs to do, and then we would bring in uh, various health experts, Steve, to talk about some of the health concerns and some of the frankly the religious freedom concerns, the health freedom concerns, the liberty and freedom concerns that we have, and that's really what. So that that first conversation turned into what I call these health and freedom festivals that uh, we are now into our fourth one. We, we started in Tulsa. We went to um, Tampa. Uh, We went to Anaheim, California. We now have the one up in uh, Grand Rapids, Michigan, and we are going to do a couple of others uh, out in Colorado, down in Texas. Uh, And I know that they're not going to end there. We will continue to beat the drum of, uh, of, of freedom uh, liberty and uh, and our beautiful constitution, as well as thanking the American people for for stepping up and getting involved in various ways around the country. And I, you know, we can talk about that as we go in this in this uh, interview here today. But this is really about uh, saving this country and saving America. This is no longer about you know making America great again. America has always been great. America has been great since the founder since the founders turn it into a great country. This is now about saving our country from tyranny and uh, dictatorship uh, and communism uh, as much as it is about saving and protecting our religious and health freedoms around the, around the country. Right. So this whole Reawaken America medical freedom movement started as a response to all the pandemic regulations, the fears over the loss of religious freedom, and suspicions of election fraud. Those are the things that got the Reawaken America tour going, which has had an enormous impact around the country. And this is something that's still going on. It has not died out or slowed down by any means. And this is in addition to the Flashpoint Live events that we saw earlier, uh, which have also been very, very impactful. They're definitely part of the same movement, but they are separate events and tours. And all these Reawaken America and Flashpoint Live events around the country have helped to inform people and wake people up to the corruption and the Great Reset and bring more people into the truth or mindset about waking up to the agenda of the elites. And what that's been doing this past year or so is funneling people to all of these false Christian leaders. It's getting people to trust them and go to them for answers about what to do in response to all the Great Reset and woke stuff. The more the Great Reset stuff comes out, the more righteous and trustworthy that these false Christian leaders look. Right, And even Flynn himself said at one point how one of the goals of the Reawaken America tour is to inform people around the country about who to listen to. Right, People like Stephen Strang who puts out articles about how to defeat the Jezebel spirit and rise up like Jehu. Right, So all this stuff has been going on. All this information has been uh, disseminated. All these false teachings have been spread for over a year now. And all these Reawaken America and Flashpoint live events around the country, where large numbers of people are gathering. And these false light leaders are getting more and more popular and more and more trustworthy in the eyes of the people as a result of the Great Reset getting more and more pronounced. And the truther, conspiracy, matrix, new age awakening stuff is being blatantly pushed at these events, especially the Reawaken America events, uh, which I plan on getting into more in future projects and documentaries. But the tours and events have really kickstarted a grassroots response around the country. 
And as I said, a Trump victory would not have led to that. But with someone as horrible as Biden in office, who likely got in illegally, and who is clearly mentally unstable and pushing blatant nonsense, it's making people finally say, okay, we have to really get involved here. It's making people cling to their idolatry and their patriotism. It's making what may have been latent patriotism that was just kind of there, but it wasn't really, uh, wasn't really extreme. It's now waking up that latent patriotism. And as Lance Wall now said in the trailer at the beginning, the awakening is civic as well as spiritual. So the Great Awakening is also about waking people up to their civic and political power and duty. The spiritual awakening and civic or political awakening are part of the same mentality, right? As little gods, we should exercise our political authority and not allow ourselves to be enslaved or ruled by tyrants, because that's not what little gods deserve, right? And the Dominionists, whether it's Lance Wallnau or Jeff Durbin, they're making it sound like it's all about Christ and his dominion, but really it's about themselves. And they're just using Christ's name to give themselves power and authority. And Mike Flynn and many others are talking about the need for local action and local involvement from people around the country. And we're definitely starting to see that more than ever before. As I said, this isn't some psyop. This is a very genuine response from people all around the country who are getting pulled into a war of the flesh because of their idolatrous hearts. To just label this whole false light or great awakening movement as some psyop is itself a truth or interpretation of events. That is itself part of the awakening mentality, the awakening deception, because all you're doing is simply awakening to another agenda of the elites. So people who call QAnon a psyop are ironically thinking like a QAnoner. They're thinking like a truther. Right Here's a, a screenshot, for example, of uh, Russell Brand and, and Tim Poole uh, talking about psyops. Okay, To call this or that out as a psyop is to still think like a truther, is to still be stuck in the false light mentality. So you're not really coming out of the rabbit hole by calling QAnon a psyop. You're actually staying in the rabbit hole. In fact, you're only going deeper in the rabbit hole because you're waking up to, wow, another agenda. You know, people stuck in that mentality have to have these complicated charts uh, with lines and circles everywhere that you know supposedly maps out the real agenda with these groups involved and they're at the top and they're doing this and that. And that's not what I'm doing. And I'm not exposing the agenda of the elites. People still think that that's what my channel is about. What's really going on is much bigger and quite frankly much simpler than that. What's really going on is people on a mass scale are being led astray by their own wicked hearts, just like in the Old Testament. And you don't need a complicated chart to detail what was going on in the Old Testament. When the people fell for the messages of the false prophets and this idea of false peace as the threat of tyranny was coming upon them. You know, the false prophets back then were not government agents launching psyops on the people, right? But the whole truth or mentality has really complicated things. It's gotten us away from the basics of Scripture and the basic lessons that it teaches us. So, the false light has not lost. It has not died out. It's stronger than ever before as a result of Biden's presidency. In fact, both sides are getting stronger and more pronounced. The dark, communist, tyrannical, woke stuff gets more pronounced, which then jolts the Great Awakening into further action. And back and forth we go. As Flynn and Strang and others talk about, they say that uh, the church is being canceled. It's losing its freedoms. And we need to awaken Americans to their freedoms that the elites are trying to take away from us. This is what this back and forth between false light and dark is all about. It's this dialectic between freedom and tyranny. Not between one group of elites and another, but between freedom and tyranny. That's the tension that I think is finally going to kickstart the tribulation. The empire striking back, so to speak, to put it in uh, Star Wars terms, which, as I've said before, is the perfect way to describe this counterfeit spiritual war. The empire striking back is what will give rise to the return of the Jedi, right? 
or the rise of Jehu, and eventually the beast. Remember, you don't have a Jehu without a Jezebel first, right? Jezebel is what necessitates or empowers a Jehu. And that's what's been happening the past year and a half or so. Jezebel has gotten really, really bad, which has in turn sparked a Jehu response. There's a back and forth here. And this back and forth has to continue for a while in order to really get things heated up to the point where the white horse goes out and the tribulation finally starts. I think people who believe that the tribulation starts off with the whole world united under a false peace system are mistaken. I think it makes much more sense to say that the tribulation is kickstarted by the most extreme tension between two opposing sides. And then out of that collision and resultant chaos will arise the beast as savior to stop the apocalypse, so to speak. And so I think the pendulum swings are about to get really extreme, more so than they ever have. Right, so you believe that there are way more than 2,000 mules, but you were just focusing on this group that had this very sort of high threshold. And as you show in the movie, I mean, a lot of these people that were repeatedly going to these drop boxes, they, I mean, they look like transients or almost homeless people. A lot of them, they're showing up at 4 a.m. and 7 a.m. They kind of look disheveled. Um, they, in other words, they don't look like sort of the upstanding citizen that's doing their due service for the country because they've collected some ballots for, you know, some people that can't, you know, drop the ballots off themselves. It doesn't come off exactly like that. Let's remember that these aren't, this isn't the post office. This isn't where you go to drop your bills off. These are only for ballots. There's no other reason to go to these drop boxes other than to dump ballots. And why would you go to 10 or more drop boxes unless you were stuffing them with ballots? So that's the sort of technological reasoning behind the power of the geo-tracking evidence. And I think you can see this is the power of the video. The second line of evidence in the movie is you begin to see not just cell phone devices moving from one drop box to another, but you actually get to see the mules. And I think it's very telling because when you see a guy jump out, jump out of a car, it's three in the morning, he looks left and right, make sure no one's looking at him. It has all the hallmarks to any observer that this is an illicit and nefarious operation being conducted under cover of night. The basic idea was that they, they drew kind of boxes around the drop boxes, and then they drew boxes around these nonprofits, and they could see how people were moving. This is the claim. But if you can see a pattern of travel that shows people, and the only path that they are taking that day, right? It's not like they're just driving around the city and they happen to pass these things. They're going to every drop box and they're driving past every drop box. That looks really, really suspicious. Okay, so they actually do this at one point in 2000 Mules. They actually show a mule's movement through what they call these people mules, like drug mules, because they're ballot mules, supposedly. This is in Atlanta. What you see here on the screen is a single person on a single day in Atlanta, Georgia. They went to 28 drop boxes in five organizations in one day. What are the orange dots? Those are drop boxes. That's super suspicious, obviously. If you have one person who's stopping at 30 drop boxes, that's really, really, really suspicious. So the first thing that's leading to this next uh, pendulum swing, and uh, this is what we'll wrap up this first part with, is the election fraud stuff. Uh, you heard General Flynn mention it before, and it's been alluded to by many, many people within the Great Awakening movement this past year. Uh, Mike Lindell, for example, said early last year that when all the election stuff comes out, it's going to lead to the greatest revival in history. And it's all finally starting to come out now. Dinesh D'Souza just recently released his documentary on the alleged 2020 election fraud called 2000 Mules. And it's already taken off pretty quick. Uh, there have been many, many people within the Great Awakening movement who have promoted the film and attended screenings and premieres of it. Uh, Trump has promoted it, obviously. Um, here's a shot of Jack Hibbs promoting it on his Facebook page. And uh, many of you know the dominionism and extreme patriotism that he's been promoting lately. And Charlie Kirk and Eric Metaxas are actually both in the film. And uh, both of them are yoked with NAR, Seven Mountain Mandate Teachers. Uh, Eric Metaxas is good friends with Bill Johnson of Bethel. And Charlie Kirk is friends with Lance Walnow, in addition to many other questionable leaders. And apparently, it's the most successful political documentary in the past 10 years. And basically, the film documents how a number of people with clear connections to left-wing organizations 
were all making these suspicious stops at dozens of ballot drop boxes. You know, a single person would take a particular route that just happened to have um, anywhere between 10 and 30 drop boxes on it, presumably to drop fraudulent ballots in favor of Biden. And they're saying that there were thousands of these people, uh, these ballot mules, they're calling them, a play on of the term drug mules, which when added up accumulated hundreds of thousands of illegal votes in favor of Biden. And I think this is just the first wave of evidence, so there will likely be more in the coming months and maybe years. D'Souza has said that there are far more than 2,000 mules. It's just that the film is focusing specifically on these 2,000, while more investigations continue. And you know, the way that liberal politicians were saying how it was the most secure election in history, to me it was like a blatant invitation to conservatives to investigate it. And I think that's what it was. It was very obviously suspicious language that seemed to be intentionally provoking a response. You know, like, come and prove us wrong. Come and prove that it's not the most secure election ever. It was almost like very bad trolling on their part. And I haven't seen the film. I've only seen the trailer and a few clips. But from what I've seen, I think it's pretty clear that there was, at the very least, suspicious activity in the 2020 election on a fairly large scale. Now, whether or not it was enough to tip the election in favor of Biden, I don't know. I think it's certainly possible. And that's definitely the claim of the film, that these ballot mules tipped the election in favor of Biden and got him illegally elected. But whether or not the film definitively proves anything, I think is beside the point. I think the main point is that for many, many people, it will be enough proof. It will be enough to strengthen the Great Awakening. Uh, for example, here's Greg Locke commenting on a post from Bryson Gray, uh, who's this supposedly Christian rapper, uh, but he's definitely very NAR, Dominionist leaning. And he said, whoever checked Joe Biden's Twitter followers needs to check his votes too. And then Greg Locke commented, makes sense seeing how his entire election was fake. And what Gray was referencing is that apparently an enormous number of Joe Biden's Twitter followers uh, turned out to be fake accounts. So more and more stuff is coming out about how fake and corrupt everything is, about how we're being lied to about everything. And this is all giving the Great Awakening more and more momentum. Now, I'm not saying that the whole country is going to go red or get red-pilled or that everyone is going to get behind Trump and the Great Awakening because of this. Um, I think that probably will happen to a degree. And over the years, there have been many figures who have identified as a liberal or Democrat who have either changed political identities altogether because of corruption being exposed, or at the very least have sided with conservatives against the more extreme leftism, uh, which uh, Dave Rubin, Russell Brand, and Bill Maher are all examples of, which we'll uh, be looking at throughout this series. But um, they all still identify as liberal, but are siding with conservatives against the more extreme wokeness and globalism. But I think the lines are more or less drawn by now. I think now it's more about just getting people to actually take action for their side. Uh, you know, if you remember uh, when that video footage of Planned Parenthood came out, where they were blatantly talking about harvesting the body parts of aborted babies, even when the evidence was blatant, they still defended themselves. And some liberals were saying how, you know, the footage was doctored or edited to make it look like uh, you know, something else was happening that wasn't. So my point is, if you've already chosen your side, you're not going to care about the evidence against you. You're just going to be more hardened in your position and double down. So I think stuff like this is just going to strengthen and embolden both sides uh, rather than just convince everyone to convert and join one side or the other. I don't think there's going to be true unity in the world until the real deal Antichrist shows up. That's when everyone will join the false light. But until then, I think it's going to be this very extreme back and forth where both sides uh, get more and more emboldened. Because see, when you expose the sins of someone who's not willing to repent, all that does is make that person angrier and more hardened in their sin. All they do is lash out and maybe try and hurt you. I mean, look at Jezebel. You would think that Elijah defeating and killing all of her prophets would make her reconsider some things, right? And maybe repent and worship the true God. But it didn't. All it did was make her angrier and more of a monster. 
all it did was make her want to kill Elijah. And I think that's what's going to happen with the left woke Jezebel side is that as the right side exposes their sins and their corruption more and more, it's just going to make them angrier and lash out. And that's definitely been the case with the LGBT stuff, as we'll be talking about. So rather than convince the other side of their wrongdoing and convert them or get them red-pilled or whatever, I think what stuff like 2000 Mules tends to do is simply anger the side that's being exposed and embolden the side that's doing the exposing, providing them with more justification and motivation to take action and eventually take up arms. And, you know, looking back to the Reagan era, uh, that was a huge red wave, right? A revival of conservatism in America. There's a lot of parallels with what's been going on with Trump. But that didn't stop the leftist globalist stuff, right? In fact, it only started getting worse after that with Bush 1 and then Clinton and Obama. The New World Order stuff started getting more blatant right after the Reagan administration. You know, Bush Sr., for example, has those infamous clips that truthers always use where he's publicly proclaiming the New World Order and its inevitability, right? They got more emboldened and in your face with it. And that came right on the heels of the conservative wave in the 80s. And that's what's been increasing more and more in the past few decades is this back and forth between red and blue, between nationalism and globalism, and the globalism stuff really intensified leading up to Trump. Then Trump helped to usher in a nationalist wave. And then right after that, we went back to more globalist intensification. And now we're starting to see another huge nationalist tidal wave building. So my point is that not everyone is just going to immediately join the false light red pill awakening side just because all this stuff is being exposed. The dark side is not going to be defeated soon. That doesn't come until much later, until deep into the tribulation. Um, I think people are under the misconception that the tribulation starts off with false peace and the harlot already defeated. And I think that belief is a result of the Left Behind series. And I just don't believe that. Um, I have a video on that called When Will They Say Peace and Safety, if you haven't seen that, where I explain the timeline of when the false peace period occurs. And I think it's near the end of the tribulation, right before Christ returns. I think the sudden destruction that comes upon the world after they proclaim peace and safety is not the start of the tribulation, but is Christ returning with his wrath. And I think there are a lot of misconceptions about all of that. Um, I think the tribulation starts by an extreme tension between false light and dark. I don't think it starts off with a false light victory. I just don't think that that view makes much sense, which, again, I explain in that video. So if you haven't watched it, I would recommend uh, checking that out. But in my view, what kickstarts the tribulation is these two sides, false light and dark, nationalism and globalism, new age and new world order, great reset and great awakening. They both reach a boiling point, and that's what finally sets off the tribulation. And this continued exposure through documentaries like 2000 Mules and others, it's going to continue to build the tension between the two sides. It's going to not only anger the Jezebel side more and make them get more crazy and amp up uh, their attempts to control the world, but it will make the Jehu side feel more justified, more self-righteous, more protective of their American idolatry, and more hardened in false doctrines and teachings like postmillennialism and dominionism, and prophetic spiritual warfare. And like I said, this is only the first wave of this investigation, so uh, there might be more blatant evidence coming out in the near future. Uh, maybe mules will come forward and admit that they were paid by this or that liberal politician or organization. So don't expect this to die out. I think this will probably uh, pick up more steam. So anyway, that'll do it for this first part. Uh, we'll pick up with the Disney and LGBT stuff in part two. God bless.